In this tutorial, we're going to go over the squash and stretch principle and apply it to a simple ball bounce animation in Adobe Animate. In this example here, you see a simple ball bounce animation. When the ball touches the ground, we see it squash. And just before and just after the squash, we see it stretch. How you apply the squash and stretch principle reflects the density and velocity of the object. The more squash that is applied will represent an object that is less rigid, something like a beach ball. If the object is more rigid, like a golf ball, you'll have less squash. One thing that's important to remember when applying the squash and stretch principle is that your object cannot lose its volume. For example, if you squash a ball down a certain percentage, it also must be squashed out at the same percentage, otherwise all believability of the animation will be lost. So in this example, you see that I stretched the ball out 120% vertically. To maintain believability, I squashed the ball in 80% horizontally, so that no volume was lost. When the ball reaches the apex of each bounce cycle, it should return back to its normal volume. Another thing to note when working with motion paths within Adobe Animate are these dots along the path. These dots represent the frames of the animation. The fewer the frames, or the fewer the dots, the faster the animation will go. The more dots or more frames, the slower the animation will go. You'll notice that with each bounce, the ball bounces a little bit lower, representing the effect of the gravity pulling on the ball. Also with each bounce, you'll notice that the squash and stretch principle is applied a little bit less, representing the reduced force on the ball and the reduced velocity. Let's go ahead and recreate this animation for ourselves on a new layer. Let's create a new layer and label it Ball2 and create a circle on that layer. Once we have the circle created, we need to convert it into a symbol. Make sure you have some blank frames in your animation layer. In this example we do. Right click anywhere on the frames and select Create Motion Tween. Move your current time indicator to a new frame in your timeline, select a circle, and then move the circle. Once you move the object, a new keyframe will be created in your motion tween. Let's go ahead and follow the same keyframe pattern that I have in the existing animation example. I'm going to fast forward a bit to get the rest of the path created. Now that we have the path created, we notice that at the apex of each bounce, the keyframe is quite sharp. This is called a linear keyframe. It doesn't represent the way a ball bounces and is not believable. We can change the keyframe type by dragging out the Bezier curves and making it more curved. We start by selecting the sub-selection tool located here. Hold down the option key and drag out the keyframe along the motion path. If you hold down the shift key, it'll lock the Bezier curve along the x-axis. Do this for the rest of your apex keyframes, but don't apply this technique to the bounce keyframes. Let's apply the squash and stretch principle to the animation now. We'll use the same keyframe layout as our example from before. Remember, if you stretch an object out, you also have to squash it in to maintain volume and believability. You'll notice when we apply the squash and stretch principle to the first bounce animation frame that the ball is no longer touching the ground. Don't worry about it at this point, we'll come back and fix them all when we're done applying the squash and stretch principle. Also remember that with each bounce, the velocity will be lower and the impact will be lower, so your squash and stretch principle should be less. I'm going to fast forward ahead and get the rest of the squash and stretch principles applied. If you go back to each of the squash frames, you can drag the ball down and Adobe Animate will snap it to the top of the ground layer. In just a few minutes, you've been able to apply the squash and stretch principle to a basic ball bounce animation. Now see how you can apply this principle to other objects in life. Happy squashing! Thank you.